Hello everybody, my name is Craig Bennett and I'm the founder and owner of TechFuse Nope. And today I am going to show you how to figure out with a Android device where is your network going through on your cell phone service. And chances are it's through a government system. And I'm going to get into uh, how to do this, how to figure it out, how to uh, how, how to actually go and and uh, figure out why they're doing it. At least I'm gonna give you some reasons why the government said that they're doing this and why I think they're doing this. And um, I'm going to explain how to to basically make it where the government, at least in the United States, has a much harder time getting your information, at least without a warrant. So let's jump on into this. You need obviously have to have a, a Android device. You might be able to do this with other devices. You can't simply, I, I just tested this out. You can't simply go to a browser and say, what's my IP address, unfortunately. But amazingly with Android devices is you can go to, and I'm going to show the uh, screenshot of the end result. Make sure your Wi-Fi is off. Uh, scroll down your notifications tab depending on what version you have there might be a different way to do this but just you're basically just trying to get to your systems settings then um, if you're on a device like mine you just go to more basically you're looking for about this device uh, so depending on what version of Android you have it might be at the very bottom it might be at the last tab it'll be somewhere on there it will say about this device or about this phone or about this tablet about this something then once you click on that, you should see status, click on that, and then look for IP. And I will have a screenshot of mine, and you can check check out that and see what it looks like and what you'd be looking for. Keep in mind some things will be blocked, in fact most of the stuff will be blocked out, but everything else uh, should be just fine. So let's talk about that IP address. How to figure out who owns it. Um, well, just simply go to a site like this, who is, who dot is, or any site like that, and type in the IP address in their search and just press enter, and something should come up. There's other ways to find out, but it's all going to lead you to the same area. So for this one, my IP address, as you've seen from the screenshot, is 3... Uh, 33.111.224.183 now my stuff appears to be going through the Department of Defense which is the United States government agency uh, mil military wise agency because it's defense and um, I've seen on uh, other phones not mine but other other people's phones they going through the UK so I'm not really sure how widespread this is. This might be other countries or it might be just the two. So if you see yours going through some other country or some other agency or whatever, feel free to leave the, leave the IP address below in the comment section. Leave where the thing says it is, um, either being United States Department of Defense, UK's, uh, whatever they call it or whatever and and um, hopefully we can figure out what's going on as far as that goes now as far as the government's excuse for this um, it's sort and simple and sweet and it might be true it might not I don't think it is what the excuse is is simply speaking is the government has plenty of um, space and they're allowing the cell phone networks to use that space to simply put, I say BS to this because I've been around the government long enough to know that if they can save a tenth of a cent, they're going to save a tenth of a cent. And something like this costs a lot of money. I don't know if if mass amount of the population goes through something like this, but assuming that there is, this this costs a lot of money in the millions, um, or at least in the the several hundred thousand, depending on how efficient they got their stuff. But um, as far as this goes, basically what happens here is, say you want to send an email out. I, I don't care, an email, picture, or whatever. It's going through the internet. 
you send something out, it goes, let's say you're using your phone. Keep in mind, some computers have, have um, cell phone service on them, tablets too, and some other things. Uh, because some people have those wireless things that connect to the cell phone towers instead of a, um, either a cable line or whatever. And uh, what happens? Let's say you're sending an email out from your phone. Email goes from your phone to the, the cell phone network to, say for me, it'll be Columbia, Ohio, Department of Defense, Information Center. It goes out to the internet, and whenever I receive something, it'll be reverse. Now, how do you stop them from getting your information and um, specifically make it harder for them to get your information? You just put yourself in a paid VPN in the United States, keep in mind I'm not a lawyer. I believe you have to have a search warrant to search the data going through a VPN. And, um, and without that uh, paid VPN, make sure it's paid, then um, basically they, uh, you know, they, they, they got free range. They can take it and do whatever they want. Now keep in mind, they're probably not going to target anyone with, with the information. They're probably not going to do anything with the information. Again, it's probably something like the Cold War time where it's just triggered stuff, um, safe than sorry type of things, which is, some people might see as fine, some people might see as still a problem, which either way, it's whatever. But as far as things goes, um, a paid VPN is your best bet for something like this. You can also throw yourself in some other type of encryption methods. Maybe your encryption method within inside of a, a VPN is probably a best bet uh, if, if you're really trying to hide your stuff but at that point you're it's overkill and a VPN a paid VPN should be just fine now in the summary how's that work a paid VPN uh, a VPN at all it creates a uh, what's called a VPN tunnel this basically means that it creates a secure connection to whomever and um, if someone tries to break that tunnel, try to see what's in it, the tunnel will collapse and move somewhere else. So I try to break into it and move somewhere else so I don't get anything. Saying I do get into it, whatever reason, and, and, and still get the information, the information coming across is encrypted. Depending on its level of encryption, which I advise the highest, the uh, depend on its level is depend on how quick it's to decrypt and to decrypt some of the stuff it takes it can take more than 200 generations so you're, you're definitely going to find where it's just pointless so that's that's something to keep in mind as far as this uh, this stuff works because encryption is not about stopping someone from decrypting these things encryption is actually about how do you make it so hard and so resource intensive that it's just not worth trying to get in to the data? So that, that's, that's all encryption is about. So it has nothing to do with actually stopping someone um, as far as, um, as decrypting it. Because that's going to happen. Even on uh, logins and stuff, unless it's two-step verification. Because brute force attacks can always work unless it's two-step verifications, and even then, it, there's a small chance that it could work, um, depending on how the system's set up. So, as far as things goes, uh, it, the paid VPN's the best way to go. Check your local laws to make sure. One thing to check, it, no matter what country you're in is if your VPN service is out of country, check your international laws too because at worst case scenario that may actually help you out in some aspect in case if you got a corrupt country that you're living in or whatever that may help you out or not. I, you know, it's, it's hard to say nowadays but that's something worth to check out international and local laws depending on where your paid VPN is. But that, that's pretty much the only way. But anyways, uh, if you got any questions or anything, you can feel free to leave them down there below in the comment section. And I'll try to get back to you as quickly as possible. If you're looking for a VPN, I recommend private internet access. It's it's pretty good. Um, they're all pretty much the same, but 
private internet access is pretty good. I got it on my phone. I got it on my computers and stuff. And it's, it's pretty good. The uh, one thing I'll recommend is if you're doing a, um, a VPN at all on your computers and phones and whatnot, don't have it automatically log in. And the reason why is if you're trying to locate your device, if someone stole it, and it's what I forgot to add into my previous video, if someone stole it, then it's going to show it somewhere else. So keep that one in mind. Don't have it automatically log in, and that way you're able to get your device back if someone steals your device. So that, that's a huge thing. But anyways, again, if you leave a comment below if you got any. Also, if you come across any of this and you want to share it, leave that below the IP address and and the organization and uh, just copy and paste them in and, and go from there and may maybe a, uh, a link from the references but um, as far as everything else uh, if you got another method on doing this stuff then feel free to leave that below but uh, if this has helped you or if you liked it then please like please subscribe and please share and I hope you have a great day, and this has been Craig Bent from Tech Fusion Up.